Right, you're watching TVC Breakfast. Let's get to our next discussion. Now, the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has climbed up the ladder of politics as he aspired for the highest political position in Nigeria and won. So much has been said about him by many on his antecedents, especially his laudable performance as the state's former governor. Uh, that's in Lagos. As the countdown to May 29 inauguration day continues, many anticipate what his administration will bring forth for the Nigerian people. So that's the crux of our discussion next. And joining us to talk about his book on Nigeria's soon-to-be president is Adewale Justice. He, he has written a book here. Uh, he calls Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu against all odds. Adewale Justice, good to have you join us in the studio. It's my pleasure. Good Welcome. morning. Welcome. Great. Now, let, let's start with uh, the, the title of this book. When you say against all odds, make us understand the kind of odds you're referring to here. Thank you very much. On the basis of this, you know, odd in its entirety mm. is an item of negativity. Yeah. That which makes ordinarily people crash, get crushed, and get destabilized. But looking through that, but you know, I left banking. As I was just running out of banking, something came to mind. I did internal controls. And some few years to my exit, I observed that almost everyone that headed my department across the various banks I worked, Years after, they became shadows of their former selves. Hello? Who they used to be, the influences they used to corner, and so many other good things. But later, because I was in a particular bank, three years into the exit of a former head of my department, the woman was in one of our branches for a bank transaction. First, I found her on the queue with some other customers. And two, the look was nothing to write to me about. And that gave me a concern that, oh, what about this? Because then I realized, see, the inability of a man to go back to his former territory and enjoy some privileges over others shouldn't be confused for humility. Hello? When a man goes back to his former region, his former place of uh, strength and territory, and on getting there, he's now joining the queue to enjoy what others have come to enjoy. That is not humility. It means a lost influence. Hmm. Do so you understand? I think such person is entitled to certain kind of privileges over others. It is natural. Do you understand? In every human setting. So, as I was wrapping up, then immediately I exited banking. My mind came up with a book when this job is over. That is, having left this your seat, this your edifice, what becomes of you, what becomes of your influence, what becomes of your social capital. And successfully, the book was done. But on the fourth chapter, I went rousing. Who in the African section can be referred to as an ambassador for this concept that having worked, having occupied this role, having played this part, but when you are no more there officially, you still wield influence. So I started looking around, theoretically, and I found only one person. That a man who had been several years, above 10, 15, and yet when roaring from as far as Bodilon, Allah Saikeja is shaking. Roaring from Bodilon, Ondo State, or uh, Kitty State, or your state, Edo, and I have, um, Oshun are getting some time. So you realize that there's something. So I had to make him the career ambassador of that book. But luckily, last year, when the presidential ambition was made known openly and officially, I had to expunge the entirety of the fourth chapter of that book on that man who used to be in office, but now out of office is still wielding influence. Now what about him? And luckily, you know, if you step an inch further into the life and times of Ashua Jubola Metinubu, starting from parenting, parenthood, do you understand? You see there is no 
soft landing, parenting for him. But yet, he made it up. Why, why do you think this is so? Because, of course, he, he has many peers, so to speak, in the, his capacity as a former governor who wield some form of influence, yet you chose uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu. Uh, why do you think he is what he is? You know, even up till now, he still faces... He, he, he faced and surmounted, you know, many odds, but, but yet he's, he's still standing. And now he's, he's about to be inaugurated as Nigeria's next president. What do you think, you know, life, how, how you think it all panned out for him that he is what he is now? That is the uniqueness we uttered and we documented here. Because amidst all, in the 1999-2007, there were 36 of them. But you see, even for my own state, I'm from Ondo State. You know, even now, I can't categorically tell you or remind you of the name of the then governor. But you see, Ashura Jubala met in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, even in the political area, in the uh, religious arena, the name keeps ranging and ringing bells. And you know, I kept, why this? Why this? And some things came up. Like I said, Humility is not when you go back to your former territory and you join the queue with others. It is that, that is lack of influence. And number two, when you see a man who builds men, is procuring and securing for himself shelter, shield, armor, accommodation, and defense. And as the issues were coming up, you realize Ashwaju stands as a figure. For whom very many are willing to put their head. Hello? Do you understand? He's been that man around. And you know, if I may share something with you, if you are, particular, if you are very uh, 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 peculiar to our polity, 1963, it was the days of the Obafemi Awolowo. Mm -hmm. 1993, late chief MQ Abiola came up. Now, 2023, a 30 year syndrome. Now you have an Ashwaju, but there is something. The social capital, the number of men, like you see, there's something we tell people about growth as a motivational teacher. See, growth is not the advancement of a man to the next level, but a man's ability to go up and ahead with so many others. And you see, if you read this book very critically, there's an analogy I made there of a, an old lion. Mm -hmm. That an old lion is not able to fight as much as he was when he was young. But because he must have trained up some younger ones, so when he is old, he becomes stronger and more able to fight. So amidst the retinue of politicians we have in Nigeria, because I've been trying to appeal to people, they should please separate being a politician from being a leader. Mm. A politician is that man that wields all he has, all he knows, and what all he can to acquire power retain power and become the head of that power center. But a leader is that man who, while advancing in the course of his life, he comes along and brings up so many others. So that at a stage in life, you will see retinue of personalities singing his song, blowing his trumpets, and beating his drums. Right. That is what is singling him out. But, but amidst all, all this odds uh, but you know yep. you also chronicled the opposition he faced uh, you know but both in and out of governor battling federal might, might when he was governor and you know despite all this um, you know endowments that you know stands him out we, we saw the fierce opposition he also faced within his party yep. before he emerged the, the party's flag bearer and even at the at the election he was keenly contested and yep. people are even saying that even nowadays to inauguration you know th th there is still this this who about um, the inauguration amidst the electoral petition which is not exact which is not new in in our in, in our, our own politics. times you know yet what we're, we're having how do you reconcile all of this you know against the man and the the, the value he brings to the system i'm talking about uh bola Tinubu. that is this that you have just highlighted remains my joy of authoring and publishing this book even before the election. You understand? Because like the odds that we are mentioned, starting from his upbringing, through his education, then employment career, then this polity, 
Because if you are familiar with his records, 1993, he came in here as a senatorial candidate. It wasn't easy. He made it true. Even for his education, an international, a foreign student. Do you understand? A foreign student, an event, at the end, he made it as the best. And you know, while we were growing, while we were schooling, a child, a student, bears more opportunities and potencies of doing better when there is solid parental background and support. But for a man who is well over there, Chicago State University, not in Nigeria, and at the end, he made it out to be the best. And again, if you are familiar with his um, CV, he did not just make it as the best. He was even an engaged student as an employee in the school. He enjoyed scholarships, and he did all that even natives of the university could not enjoy. Hello? And when you now come to the polity, Ashiwa Dubola Ahmed Tinubu has, has been, is, he, he went through the most keenly contested election in the history of Nigeria. And the most fierce opposition came from nowhere against him, constituting the odds we are discussing here. And what took him through? Because if you read through these books, I Christian Ashiwaju as a surgeon of betrayers. Hello? Well, how, how, how do you mean by that? A surgeon of betrayers. He described himself in one of his speeches, 63, 73, 83, 93, up to 2023. This same Ashiwaju refused sheep jumping, political sheep jumping. How do I mean? Today we are here. Tomorrow the focus changes. You jump onto another party, leaving the ideologies of your intent. But you will see, he had been with the AG. And there is a man in this book, um, Dele Alake. You do you understand? You know, back to the days of MKO polity, Dele Alake was part of that group. And you will see, Ashiwaju came on, <coughs> Dele Alake is still with, was with Ashiwaju in his period as the governor of Lagos State. And now, if you are familiar with the, the presidential inauguration and all those stuff, do you find the same Dele Alake? They share career sympathy. Mm. How do I mean? You know, in the definition of uh, career, while we talk to people about uh, life growth, I say career is a livelihood engagement that spans for a while, but with relative responsibilities and authorities. How does that come to be? As she do like we appeal to people, it's not just an opportunist politician. And if you read, he was with Mobile, Exxon Mobile, and he pulled out of Mobile to start politics. And he came in with the uh, MKOBRT, okay. and he started as a senator. From there, he, because he became a governor, and now a president. You see, he rose through the ranks, like the Mandela Alake I was referring to. You saw, Alake was with MKO. When MKO went to the other side, Alake has been with Ashwadu. And here we are moving to the villa. Alake is still with the same Ashwaju. So you see that career consistency with ideologies attributable to the issues of AG of 1953. But luckily, seeing that this man will spark marks of differences in our polity, very many things came up against him. All right. Let, let's, let's, what now, uh, he is going to be the man everyone is going to talk about in the country right now, whether you're in the APC or not, because he's going to be inaugurated as president after all. So every eyes will be oh, on yeah. the president uh, from May 29. What is that thing? Because you've written the book on him and chronicled the, the very many aspects of him and all the odds that he has to. How do you think he's surmounting these odds? Is go, are going to benefit Nigeria and Nigerians going forward. Because right now, Nigerians have had leaders, uh, different leaders from all parts of the country over the years yes. who have failed them one way or the other. Right. right now, Nigerians are so impatient. They want a miracle to happen right now. Talk to us from that window as we wrap. Thank you very much. If I may call you up to something again. As you since 1960, up till date, he has been the only prepared president Nigeria would have. How, how do you? Yeah. 
lot of the past leaders, if not all, they were opportunists. Mm. They came to be... Not, not, so, not so many Nigerians who will agree with you on this. I am ready to take on and take up anybody on that perfect. Right. Perfect. But, but break it down. Let's yeah. understand yeah. your perspective. I mentioned career. Mm. What throws a man into uh, expertise is not his intent, but what he's able to deliver. And that delivery hangs so much on experience and exposure. But look at that man that opted out of paid employment and came into the polity, not watching from tr or through the window, but he jumped onto the train and he's been railing with the train as a National Assembly member, as a governor, and now as... And look, look, at, look at the drama in the APC. You see, Nigeria had the first... I, I show you, he midwived the most historic political merger in the history of Nigeria. Hello? That never happened. But if you read the records, and you, see what, you saw what happened last year at the, at the primary, when the powers that were wanted consensus to be, you will see northern governors, Ashwadu is a southwesterner, northern governors came up and said, no, this is where we are going. And you saw the results. So in his personality, he is the most prepared presidential candidate Nigeria ever had. Because the bulk of the rest, either from prison, either from retirement, either from farmland, either from incidences of nature. Maybe the boss died and you were the next one found. Not prepared. Or those guys that came on through military deter, coup d'etat. Hello? Can you picture any as having been prepared for the job? And you know, preparation is the greatest tool and spice for success. Whoever did not prepare, may never end success. If there is any semblance of success, that is what we teach in motivational world as fortune, not success. Fortune. You just ram and run into it. Not that you prepared for it, but look at a man whose leadership and citizens are all over. I am building in Lagos. I left the entirety of Ondo State because what we saw, what we met, have been in Lagos since 2003, and we refused to relocate. Mm -hmm. And you see, he has been a trailblazer. He started what others never initiated. And he has been an odd man out. The oddity of his personality is the uniqueness of his strength. Because he would want it this way. But for ignorance, the others on the altar and corridor of polity never wanted that way. Right. But you will so, see, records are all there for his success. Right. So, so as a people now, we've run out of time. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. But Wait. what do you think we should um, you know, be looking forward to as a people? You know, everyone seeking better governance mm. like after May the 29th. In five seconds. Yeah, as much as we are still on the planet Earth, magic should not be expected. Miracles should not be expected. For a nation that was enraged for over six decades, please, nobody should expect sudden turnaround. But steps will be put in place and for his performance credentials support should be sought for him to prosper okay uh, a nice way to leave it now adewale justice thank you so much the author of uh, ashwa jibola hamed tindubu against all odds it's really uh, a great read and uh, i've seen part of it and said i'll, I'll have to complete uh, you know right. to have an idea and it's sizable of what it's, it's, it's really it's, nice it's, it's a sizable uh, Th thank you for coming. this is this is what i'm offering as special souvenir for his <laughs> innovation amazing amazing right. thank you well done all right thank you so this much. is where we wrap up now we'll let you have to let you know that the views and reaction of all our resource persons are their views and have no connection with tvc news we thank you for spending your morning with us up next is your view with moriah and the ladies have a great day ahead and we'll see you on monday bye